good morning. Future of bioplastics. This is the title of this year's conference, uh, which uh, to some extent summarizes the activity of the plastics project uh, during several years. When we started with the uh, first conference uh, in Bologna, uh, uh, we have invited the coordinators of ongoing research and development project from uh, all Europe to present what is going on in this area uh, at the time we started our activity. Now summarizing what we have done, we had to say future of bioplastics. So for polymer scientists as we are, we scientists can say future should be perfect. We should be happy with well-organized system of treating of uh, polymer waste, organic waste, to introduce the correct system of uh, biodegradation of the products which are suitable for that. However, if you've seen today from the excellent presentation of Stella, the bioplastics uh, are the family where you found the children having the old carbon, children having new carbon, those who are biodegradable, and those to, which are only from the renewable sources and are not biodegradable. So uh, presenting the roadmap, uh, which uh, should serve to some extent to help the European, and in particular the Central European industry, in this kind of activities, we had to think how to look on that from the point of view of future. Whether what we would like to propose will be useful for them, or whether they will say, well, perhaps this is interesting, but we do not care. The problem is that <clears throat> when you work in the pure science, usually you have the feeling that for the nice developments we would like to present on the conferences, on, in the top journals, the industry mostly has the finger crossed, but do not particularly interest what you would like <coughs> to present. From the other point of view, there are several big companies uh, active in Europe with uh, internal research and development, which under and the basing on their analysis know in which direction, in their opinion, they should go. In Europe, however, there are a lot of small and medium-sized enterprises which uh, are not enough strong to have their own research and development. However, they frequently would like to get some ideas or help from those who think about the, let's say, prosperous future. That's perhaps a little bit pathetic in the, uh, introduction to what I would like to say. However, what I would like to stress, that if you, from the point of view of research, would like to talk with industry, you should always think about the, uh, their way of thinking. Uh, so, uh, in uh, the principle, where we have made the analysis of the future of bioplastic and in particular those which could be useful for the organic composting, we may say <clears throat> that Europe is a really the potential market. Even during the recent crisis, the companies which were involved in that kind of activities, well, they not only survive, they develop. So it means that the limitation of crisis is not the real, the critical point in this area. This is the good thing. However, the another thing is uh, to um, try to, uh, to somehow summarize uh, what points of the plastic project will be able to uh, be used as the background of that what we would like propose for the industry as a roadmap. For quite a long time, we discussed the scheme which I am just presenting to you now. We would like to define the players uh, from various points of view. 
from the point of view of the decision making people, this is that part of the story. I should come back, again come back, and press that. This is the European uh, directives, national law certification system. Then we have the bottom part of this, public and non-profit organizations responsible for the awareness arised companion training and advices. There are these two areas between which the game is played. So, research institutes, if I will be allowed to go there, the research institutes are in some cases the potential opportunity for the several steps of the chain uh, which we have defined. In this chain, as a players, we have the raw material suppliers, we have the producers and compounders of the environmentally degradable plastics, we have the converters of the flexible plastics, then we can consider two ways to go to the customers, that one or that one. And then we have the consumers and composting companies. So at each step of that, the uh, industry which is involved has different problems, has different uh, expectations, and would like to uh, get the best benefit uh, of their activity. Uh, we can try to define the kind of uh, problems where uh, can be expected at uh, various stages of the implementation of the technology which is focused on compostable plastics during the value chain. And as you will see, uh, what we uh, define is characterization of polymers available on the market, opportunity of the modification of these polymers, processing of the polymers, design effective industrial production conditions, application properties of these uh, polymeric materials and evaluation of the biodegradation and compostability. This is what we wrote here. However, it does not mean that what we identified here is the totally perfect and full uh, chain uh, which we can expect. Uh, therefore, uh, the um, document which we are now nearly at the end of present as the final one, the roadmap. The roadmap uh, is a kind of offer for discussion with industry. The offer for discussion, when uh, we would like to discuss something, usually it's easier to formulate the questions and look for answers. So uh, the another point was to define appropriate questions to the industry. I must stress that uh, preparing that part of our document, we have consulted it with some industry which works with us for quite a long time. Uh, some of the representatives are here on the audience and I am really very happy that uh, they can uh, just uh, look on uh, our work from that point of view. So the first question uh, which we expect the uh, people from industry can just put, is what type of biodegradable polymer will fit best my current processing technology? In other words, uh, this is a kind of thinking, uh, what from the point of view of novelty of what I'm doing could be connected with the biodegradable polymers? And uh, in that document, we propose uh, what the points should be considered what activities should be included, and uh, what should be considered. The another point uh, which we uh, put out is how can I make sure that the selected biodegradable polymer material has the appropriate properties for my application? Which parameters should be taken? How ca I, can I verify, uh, verify the reproducibility of the polymer material? These three questions are important, especially the last one. Why? 
In Europe, the opportunity to buy the material which is biodegradable and can be used for the compostable packages is limited to only several suppliers. Uh, some of them are located in Europe, but uh, most of them are located outside of the Europe. Uh, some of them deliver the material where you can verify the quality or uh, you can be sure that the quality is precisely defined. In some cases, you can expect the material where the final quality depends, uh, I don't want to say from day to day, uh, however, that depends uh, on the various uh, uh, parameters which are very difficult to control. This in particular concerns the available on the market polyhydroxylcanoids. Uh, some of them, uh, most of them are produced on the biotechnological way. It means that uh, to cooperate with bacteria, uh, this is the very delicate process. Some of my colleagues knows how to perform it. However, to be reproducible on that, this is the problem. Moreover, usually in that material, there is some part uh, which contains proteins from the cells uh, membranes, which still are present in the material delivered on the market how to measure it, how to say whether that or that quantity of that uh, kind of materials uh, is uh, uh, good or not. So these are the questions very specific. And for the people who are, for example, interested in the processing of the classical polymers, uh, they do not care whether in the polyethylene there are any uh, residues of bacteria. In polyhydroxyalkanoids, this is the problem. So this is the example of the question two. Then the question three is how can I chemically adduce the properties of available material for my specific production needs? It concerns particularly the areas of so-called bioactive packages where we can introduce some additives like uh, antioxidants, uh, like any other uh, components which can improve the properties of the uh, package for the particular application. Uh, therefore, uh, this also gives the opportunity to uh, make the ad additional value uh, to this uh, biodegradable material for specific uh, application on the European market. It could be advice. Question four, how can I adduce the properties of, uh, of these commercially available polymers by physical means? This is the wide area of composites. What kind of composites we can use? What additional uh, materials we can use in this kind of composites? You know the development of the carbon-based materials like graphene, uh, for example. Now the new discovery of aerographite. This is also a new opportunity. This area. Why to use that? Is it safe? Is it useful? And if so, for what kind of application? The another question: Should I do, uh, or what should I do when problems occurring during the processing? Uh, Poland is a specific country which, during the previous system, has very strong two private sectors. One is was the private farms at the village. The second was small and medium-sized plastic converters. They still work quite good in Polish market. There are many of that companies which are interested in processing not only of classical, let's say, poly polymers, but also uh, compostable polymers, and the platform which was created by Zobro uh, and the linkages which uh, Zobro has with uh, that kind of uh, industrial people is the opportunity uh, to find with them the contact and help them if they have uh, to put the question number five. Finally, uh, there will be only nine questions, so don't worry, we are just at the end. Uh, how should I conform and adapt the production parameters of my technology process? Again, uh, what we verify is uh, uh, sometimes needed to be answered when we would like to serve the industry. The question seven, uh, functional properties of the biodegradable products. 
This is in particular important in the medical applications, where we can play with the special wound dressing materials, with the special materials, for example, for drug delivery system or to the regenerative medicine. This is also the market, not only the packages, but also that specific application of that kind of material. How can I confirm uh, that my product is really compostable according to the uh, composting standards? The area which is really important, especially when you found on the market sometimes the materials which are declared to be biodegradable and are only uh, disintegratable. Uh, some people say, okay, you can use them, but some people say it's like putting the dust over your carpet. It's also the way to make the house clean, but does it work? Finally, no. So uh, the another problem concerns the uh, old and young carbon. Uh, from some people uh, and for some companies, it is nice to declare that my product is 80, 90% bio-based. How I can measure it? Uh, is it possible to do it? Therefore, the cooperation with the research institutes from Academy of Science, from the universities, from the industrial institutes in our project is able to create the scientific comprehensive offer to the industry uh, just by formulations, the questions like this. And this was the general task of the work package which I have controlled. The roadmap uh, is now, uh, I hope, available on our website and will be soon printed also in English and the national languages of the partner of the project. There, beside of the questions, we propose also the people who knows and can be asked. These are located uh, in the Central Europe in the several institutes. Uh, here you have the list. So. Uh, I was thinking, and I decided to refrain from uh, to ask uh, you by raising the hand how many of you are from industry. Uh, perhaps better not. However, if uh, some industrial people are here, uh, just please consider that as the opportunity. Or uh, you can also uh, tell the colleagues that such opportunity exists. The other problem which was concerned with the work package three of our project was just to demonstrate how for particular uh, defined by us uh, problems, the so-called case studies can work. And the subsequent presentations in this session, uh, my colleagues uh, who work with us at that work package will present to you the results of already perform case studies. At that point, I would like to thank you for your attention.